everyone, I'm Gertie. Welcome to a new episode of Gertie's World on YouTube. This month we're bringing you a totally free full-length tutorial on how to make the picnic skirt. And I love this type of tutorial because you don't need a pattern for it and you can make it for any size. So child up to adult, it doesn't matter because you're going to be making it custom for your waist and length measurements. So you may have seen my gathered skirt tutorial that I did several years ago for good housekeeping. It was one of my most popular videos ever and I'm updating it now with this fun version of a gathered skirt that has buttons all the way down and it has these big pockets. Okay, so I'm going to show you some really fun techniques and I'm going to tell you how to make this pattern for your body or for whoever you're making it for. So it goes with the picnic top, which is what you see me wearing and the mannequin wearing here. And you can get this pattern on the Gertie's World Patreon. So check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you can play around with making an overskirt version of this skirt like you see in the black and white. I did some color blocking, I did a seam about 10 inches down, and then just did one button there so you can kind of wear it playfully open over a romper. So this skirt is great, it really maximizes your summer and you know fall and winter wardrobes too because this will look so cute with skirts and boots and all that. So really just a fun versatile piece and it's great for beginners. So let's get started. Let's talk about supplies and fabric and how to make your pattern. All right, let's talk first about fabric you need and then supplies, and then I'll talk about the different pieces of fabric you need to cut to have the skirt ready to sew. So fabric first, you can make this skirt in a lot of different fabrics. I am gonna be using this lightweight denim today. And when I was shopping for this, I wasn't really sure about denim, but I knew that I wanted to have something that was had a light back and a darker front so you guys could see the difference. Denim tends to be kind of heavy. So when I was trying to decide if this was gonna work for this skirt, what I did was I just held it up in the store and just kind of made gathers with it like this. And then, you know, kind of tried to look at and determine, like hold it up to a mirror and determine if I like the way the gathers were draping. Cause that's the most important thing about gathers. You wanna make sure that they're gonna drape nicely rather than look bunchy around your waist, okay? So that's how I came to denim. This is a six and a half ounce denim. Denim is sold in ounces. So if you do wanna do denim, I would recommend going with something in the six ounce range. Chambray would be nice cotton lawn, broadcloth, quilting cottons. There's so many different fabrics you can make this in, but I would say the test is really gonna be, is it gonna drape nicely with those gathers at the waist? So to make my skirt, I needed a little over four yards because we're gonna make one long piece and I made mine four yards wide for a lot of gathers. You might make yours smaller, you might want fewer gathers, so you might only do two to three yards. This all depends on your dimensions that you want to custom make for yourself. Okay, but I needed a little over four yards for mine. The other thing you're gonna need is possibly some pocket lining fabric. So you can just line your pockets in the same fabric that you make the skirt in, but that's no fun. So why not choose something that's really cute like this little bandana print that I chose for mine. This is just a cotton poplin, really cute. So you could do that. You could get like a fat quarter of quilting cotton or something like that in a fun print. Just a quarter yard is plenty to line these two pockets. And then the last fabric-like thing that you're going to need is some interfacing. So this interfacing I'm using, it's a fusible, and this is called Trico. I get this from Fashion Sewing Supply Online, but you can also get fusible interfacing at Joann's or your local fabric store. Look for something lightweight. I really like Trico for this kind of project or a lightweight woven interfacing. Just avoid non-woven interfacing because they tend to be very cardboardy and stiff and they just don't let your uh, fabric drape nicely. So you're gonna need about a yard of that just to interface your waistband. So that's pretty much it for fabric. Next, let's talk about the other supplies that you're going to need. So buttons, this is always fun to pick out the buttons that you're gonna use. I used eight buttons on my skirt and all the dimensions that I'm gonna give you today are 
um, custom designed to use one inch buttons. So I would look out for that if you are going to be following the instructions note by note. So one inch wide buttons, these are from Limode, really cute little flower buttons. I used eight, but again, a lot of the things in this tutorial are customizable. So if you wanna just do one button at the, at the waistband, you can do that. You can do fewer buttons, you can do more buttons. It's totally up to you. This gives you nice evenly spaced buttons and then you'll have about nine inches unbuttoned at the bottom of the skirt. So you'll also need thread to match your fabric. Just all purpose polyester thread is great. Um, your cutting shears, and then it's nice to have some little sharp shears to cut your buttonholes with. Measuring tools, um, a yardstick or a measuring tape like this will be good because we're gonna be measuring long lengths of fabric. And then also something small to measure hems and facings with like a sewing gauge like this is good. And then also some other supplies for the button part of the tutorial. I love this new tool I just got. This is called a Simflex sewing gauge and it helps you mark buttons completely evenly. And it's really great, especially for a long skirt like this, where you're gonna to need to mark several buttons. You just figure out how far you want them apart, put it down on there, and then it helps you mark them so that they're perfectly even. So I love this for this kind of project. I will link you to that in the instructions. And then a marking tool for your buttonholes, like a disappearing ink pen or a chalk pen or something like that. I'm also gonna show you a method of sewing on the buttons themselves using scotch tape. So you might wanna have that handy. And then if you've ever watched one of my tutorials before, you know that I'm obsessed with these gridded rulers that are two by 18. So I always just have this around. So, and then just your normal sewing supplies like pins and um, your pin cushion and just the normal stuff you have in your sewing box. Okay, so let's talk about how to cut your pieces for the skirt. Like I said, there's no pattern. You're just gonna be cutting a series of rectangles. And I, I'm gonna give you instructions for this project, which will have all the dimensions in there, but let me just talk you through it now, but you will have some written instructions to refer back to. Your skirt piece. Now, like I said, I, I like my skirts really, really full. For that really full 50s look, I like four yards of fabric in a gathered skirt. And what that means is you're gonna have gathers like this just like tightly packed in. So instead of just like lightly gathered like this, you're really gonna have them packed in like that. All right, so that's the look that four yards will give you for someone roughly my size. So that's why I went with that. A lot of people don't like that many gathers. So if you feel like you wanna go for a more subtle effect, usually two and a half times your waist measurement is a good rule of thumb. So that's just gonna give you more sparse gathers. And in my opinion, that can be a little trickier to gather because you have to make sure to get them more evenly distributed with a little bit of space in between them. So I find that pretty challenging and I just like to pack them in there personally. So it's up to you is all I'm saying. So this piece is going to be huge or mine was huge. So it needs to be four yards long plus six inches for the overlap at center front because we're gonna turn it in an inch and a half, an inch and a half again, same on the other side, that gives you six inches. So however long you want your, or wide you want your skirt, plus six inches is how long the piece needs to be. So as you can see, mine is really big. This is how much fabric. <laughs> we're not doing any seams. So we're just gonna have one really long piece of fabric. All right, so that's my skirt piece. The length, again, this is fully customizable. I like my skirts to be 27 inches long, and I feel like that's longer than most people like them. I, again, like that 50s look where they're a little bit below my knee. So 27 inches is my perfect length. Yours is gonna be different. And then you're gonna add six inches for the hem because we're gonna do a doubled three inch hem, but again, that's something that you can customize as well if you want a narrower hem. And then you're also gonna need another five eighths of an inch of length for a seam allowance at the top. Okay, so that's how you get to your skirt dimensions. But again, please reference the document that you're gonna get. Then you're gonna cut, oh, and I just wanna say too that you don't need to make a big pattern piece for this. Like you can if you really want to, but it's, I personally find that you can just 
snip into your fabric. Most fabrics you can just tear. So just find the dimensions you need on the yardage, tear your length, and then tear it down vertically to get the length of fabric. Does that make sense? So that's how you're gonna cut it. Cut it, just tear into it. Don't be afraid. And then for your waistband, you're gonna cut a piece that is your waist measurement and it's plus three and three quarter inches long. And the reason I got to that number, if you're curious, is that it's your waist measurement plus one inch of ease, okay? So if you want more or less ease, take that into consideration, plus an inch and a half for the overlap at center front where it buttons, plus an inch and a quarter for two seam allowances. So five eighths of an inch times two. All right, so that's how we get to that measurement. And then the height of the waistband, the finished waistband that I made is an inch and a half finished. So you want to double that by, you want to double that to get three inches. And then you also need seam allowances on the top and bottom. So that's how I got to three inches plus an inch and a quarter is four and a quarter inches, okay? So that's how you get to those dimensions. I know this is a lot of math that I'm throwing at you and that's why I'm giving you that document so that you can really go through it for yourself. And then the pockets. So I just made my pockets eight inches across, nine inches tall, okay? So you need to cut that in your fabric and then also in your lining fabric. Oh, and one last thing I should say is that you want to cut your interfacing as well to the waistband dimensions. I've already interfaced mine, but that's what you need the interfacing for to apply to this. Okay, so those are all your pieces. I know I just threw a ton of numbers at you. I, what I want you to take away from this is that this is fully customizable. You can change all of those numbers as long as you have the ease in there, the, um, the overlap at center front. So if you're feeling confused, please just go to that document and it'll tell you exactly how to get your perfect measurements for these three pieces that we need. Your skirt, your waistband, and your pockets. Okay, so go cut out your fabric. We're gonna come back and we're gonna start sewing. Okay, so the best way to sew this skirt is to do as much flat before gathering the waist as possible because it makes it a lot more difficult to like put on the pockets and do the hem and the front facing and all of that after you've done the gathering. So just keep everything nice and flat. We're gonna start with pressing up the hem, which is a little unusual. We usually think of the hem as the last thing we do in the process. So I have my long length of skirt fabric laid out here. This is edge is gonna be the hem and then you can see it kind of trailing off here. This is one of the front facing edges where it opens for the button opening. So first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna go do this on my ironing board, but it's not quite big enough to show you this. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take something like your ruler or your seam gauge and set it to three inches and all the way across the bottom of the skirt, you are going to turn it up three inches, press it nice and crisp with your iron all the way across, keep pressing, do that all the way down your length, then come back and do the same thing again so that you have a doubled three inch hem and that's why we had six inches for the hem here. Now, if you want, like I said, you can do a much narrower hem for this. You could do a two inch hem, double like that, one and one. You could do even less. You could do it a half an inch and a half an inch. It's totally up to you. I chose this deep hem because I like it on full skirts. It kind of gives you a petticoat effect at the bottom to have more fullness down there and a little bit of weight. So that's why I'm doing this deep doubled hem. All right, so you're gonna do that three inches and then three inches again, all the way down the length of your fabric, pressing, all right? I know I'm not my ironing board now, but that doesn't mean that you can get away with not ironing yours. So you're gonna go to your ironing board and press it. And then you're going to put some pins all the way down your hem like this, okay? Because the next thing we're gonna do is stitch it. Now, while you're working on this, you can also do your front facings. So here you're gonna turn it in an inch and a half once, 
and then an inch and a half again, all right? And then put some pins here. All right, now one little trick is that you can trim away some of this fabric on the inside because you're gonna have a lot of bulk here from the folds. So you can open it out and then trim away some of that excess and then fold it back. So, and then you're gonna pin all the way up here. So you're gonna have an inch and a half that you're gonna be stitching here and a three inch hem down here. So take this huge piece of fabric to your ironing board, which is what I'm gonna do now. And I'm gonna press those all in. I'm gonna have them pinned and then we'll be ready to stitch these down. All right, so here's what my skirt looks like now that it's pressed nice and neatly. You can see my hem turned up three inches, then three inches again and pressed nice and flat and pinned in place. So I did that first and then I turned in the front facings, inch and a half and then an inch and a half again and pressed them nice and flat. So next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with the hem. I'm gonna start at this very edge right here and stitch along the edge all the way down the length of my skirt and then I'll stitch vertically along each edge of the facings. So down here you just wanna make sure that the facing isn't gonna be showing below the hem of the skirt. So make sure you just kind of angle it up slightly when you press it right here. And that's it, easy peasy. So let's go over to the machine and we'll uh, start sewing these. All right, we're ready to sew. So I have my machine set up with a regular stitch length, which can be around two and a half to three millimeters. And I'm using my edge stitch foot, which is this really great foot with a blade down the center, which you can set your needle to either side of to help you get a nice straight line of stitching along an edge. So you can also substitute a blind hem foot for that because it has a similar blade down the middle and you can similarly adjust your needle. So that's a little tip for you. Okay, so we're gonna sew along the hem. You can see it's a little weird where we're starting because we're on the, um, the front facing. I'm gonna back stitch. And now I'm just making sure to stitch about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fold that we turned up. Taking my pins out as I go. And on long stretches like this, sometimes I like to just hold the fabric from behind like this because it keeps it nice and flat as I'm stitching. And that's pretty much it. So we're just stitching along that edge. I'm gonna go all the way down my whole four yards of fabric and then the next step will be to do those front vertical lines of stitching on the facings. end here. So I'm just going to finish the way I started, which is by sewing over the front facing. So I'm just going to make sure that stays folded down. And sew to the front fold, that vertical edge, back stitch, and then we're done. Okay, so that's the hem. Next thing, like I said, is to do those vertical front edges that are folded in an inch and a half. So same exact thing. I'm using my edge stitch foot again. And then just stitching this down. Now my lines of stitching are going to intersect here. Go 
all the way to the bottom here and then back stitch and there we go so you can trim away any loose threads here and then we have to do the same thing on the other side of the front opening so this one I'm going to stitch from the bottom just for ease here So our facings and our hem are done at this point. So that's great. You can give it a final press just to get it nice and crisp at the bottom and the front edges. The next thing we're going to do is go over to the table and we're going to talk about sewing the pockets. We're ready to sew our pockets. So you have two cut out in your skirt fabric and two cut out in your lining fabric. And what you're going to do is you're going to put each set right sides together like this. And then you can put pins around the edges. And we're gonna sew all the way around the pockets using a quarter inch seam allowance. But we need to leave a little opening at the bottom. So it should be about three inches. So I just give myself some little marks here just to remind myself as I'm stitching. You can do the same on this one too. Just so that you don't forget what you're doing and accidentally stitch the whole thing closed because then you can't turn it right side up. Okay, so just pins all the way around like that. And now, whoops, lost one. And now we can take this over to the machine and start stitching up one of these purple marks. Use a quarter inch seam allowance, pivot, stitch all the way around, and finish at the other. All right, we're ready to sew our pockets. So let's see, where's my little purple mark? I'm starting here. I wanna make sure I put the needle back to the center position and I'm using just a regular straight stitch slash zigzag foot. Starting at one purple mark, and I'm using, since I gave myself a quarter inch seam allowance on this, just using the edge of the presser foot to align my fabric with. And a back stitch at that purple mark. You're gonna go to a quarter inch from the edge over here, and then you're gonna pivot. If you haven't done that before, you need to do it with your needle down. So use your hand wheel to turn the needle down, or if you have a button on your machine to make it go down, you can do that. But needle has to be all the way down, lift your presser foot, and then swing the fabric around so that you're now going in the correct direction. So we just turned a 90 degree angle, and you need to do that at every corner. smaller seam allowance on this piece is it just makes it a little simpler you don't have to trim away as much we're going to trim the bulk from our corners down just angling your scissors like that and just trim away as much as possible from each corner And once you've done all four corners, then you're gonna turn each pocket right side out. So use that opening that you left between your little purple marks, or whatever color your marks are. Turn it right side out. And then you're gonna just need to go in with your fingers and just kind of poke gently 
poke those corners out like that. Do that to all four corners. And then I'm just going to make sure that my iron is on because the next thing we're going to do is press the pockets flat. Okay, so you have this opening right here. You need to make sure that those little seam allowances there are turned in. And then we're going to press this flat, and what you want to do is just roll the edges of the pocket out as much as possible. You don't want the sides to be like collapsed on themselves like this with a fold. You want to roll each side out to avoid that so it's just as smooth as possible with no fold at the edge. And then you're just going to press the whole thing flat. And with a lined pocket like this one, you do want to make sure that you're not seeing any of the lining from the right side. So if you can even roll the lining slightly into the underside, that's great. So then you won't be able to see any of the print from the right side of the skirt. So just roll those edges out. And again, just slightly rolling in the lining. seeing any of your print around the edges. Okay, so there is one pocket completely sewn. I'm going to sew my other pocket and then we'll go over to the table and I'll show you how to place them on your skirt. pocket is sewn, we're going to place them on your skirt front. So either side of the front finished opening here. So here are the dimensions that I used. I came in from that front edge 16 inches. So just kind of move your pocket over there. And then I came up from the bottom 12 and a half. That bottom edge there. Okay, so you want to make sure that your pockets are level. So measure across the bottom edge of the pocket like that. And then I'm just going to double check that 16 inch measurement here. I'm going to go just a little bit further in. Okay, great. So you can always double check yourself. And if you're not sure that you're going to love this pocket placement, you can always just pin it on now or baste it on now. And then at the very end of the process, after the skirt is gathered and your buttons are sewn, then you can try the skirt on and make sure you're happy with it. But since I know where I want my pocket, it's easier to put it on flat than when it's gathered. So I'm just going to pin around these edges. And I did want to show you a fun little variation that you can do with these pockets, which is to do a flap pocket, which just means that you're going to turn this down and leave part of this unstitched. So super 50s look. I almost did it on my yellow skirt that I'm wearing and then decided that I didn't want to do it. So I might do the same on this one, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And the good news is, if you don't like it, you can just go stitch all the way up there. So it's not um, something that you really have to commit to. You can try it out. But I'm going to leave about two and a half inches unstitched at the top of the pocket. So I'm just going to stop stitching right here. So I'm just going to give myself a second pin here so I remember. 
And then I'll be able to kind of press that down, just give it a little steam and that you'll be able to see a little accent there. So what I'm gonna do next is, well, I'm gonna place my other pocket on the other side of the front opening. And then we're gonna take this to the machine and stitch all the way around using that edge stitch foot again. Okay, we're ready to edge stitch our pockets in place. So I put my edge stitch foot back on and position the needle so it's just to the left of the fold of the pocket here. And I'm gonna start stitching at this upper edge and back stitch. And I sometimes go back and forth a couple times at the top of a pocket because that area gets a lot of wear and tear, especially if you're like me and you're putting your phone and dog treats and all that stuff in there and taking them out all day you're gonna get a lot of wear there. So you can do what's called a bar tack on there. Your machine probably makes one, or you can just do a really narrow zigzag up there to reinforce it, or just be low maintenance and just kind of go back and forth a couple times, back stitch and forward. Okay, so we're edge stitching around the pocket. I'm coming up to this lower right-hand corner. I'm gonna pivot just like we did when we were sewing the pockets. Turn around. And that, I just sewed over where the pocket opening was that we used to turn the pocket right side out. So this edge stitching will close that opening effectively. So a lot of times you have to slip stitch an opening closed or something like that, use a hand stitch. But um, in this case, we don't need to because the edge stitching will hold it close. Okay, so here I'm coming up to my crossed pins that I put there to remind myself to stop stitching. So when I get there, I'm going to back stitch back and forth a couple times and stop to leave myself this nice little flap here. And like I said, I'm not totally committed to it. If you want to not do a flap, like I did on the yellow skirt I'm wearing, you would just continue sewing all the way to the top and then you'll just have a regular patch pocket there. But what I'm gonna do is turn this down and then I'll give it a little steam to kind of hold it in place. And I think it'll look real cute. Okay, so there's one pocket. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Okay, so on this one I'll be starting at that point with the flap. Okay, so I did want to mention one little tip here when I've gotten to this corner. If I were to keep pivoting in the same direction, I would have to take all of this skirt and shove it through the center of the machine. And one cool thing that I learned from a YouTube commenter actually is that you can swing the skirt in the opposite direction and go back in the way you came. So swing it around 270 degrees rather than 90, which blew my mind. I didn't really understand it until I tried it, which just meant I'm going to turn it back the direction that I, opposite of how I've been turning it before, and now I can go this way. So, really cool trick. It's not intuitive, at least it wasn't for me, but if you ever have a really bulky project that you're sewing like this where you have to do pivots, it can be a lifesaver. So 
there's both pockets sewn. So after egg stitching, you'll just want to give them a nice press overall just to, whoops, just a crease in there, just to make them look nice. And then if you did the flap pocket, just turn the flap down and just kind of lightly steam it. You don't need to like, you know, crush it. You don't need to hold, put any weight onto it, but just hover your iron above and put some steam on and then it'll just kind of naturally hold itself in place. So there you go. Another thing that you can do is put a little accent button right here, like hold those two layers in place. That can be really cute. All right, so now we are ready to gather the upper edge of the skirt. So I'm gonna switch back to my regular presser foot. I am going to put my machine on a long stitch, so five millimeters. And put it back to a centered needle position. Now, if you watched my Good Housekeeping Gathered Skirt tutorial, one of the things it's famous for, apparently, is that I used a method using dental floss to gather the upper edge of that skirt, where I zigzagged over the dental floss. And people always mention it to me that it's their favorite thing they learned from that video. And the ironic thing is I don't really use that method that much. I just thought it was a fun little trick to show. So today I'm kind of going back to the method that I use the most often, which is the classic method of gathering using two rows of long gathering stitches. Okay, so it's very simple. If you want to use the dental floss method, you absolutely can. I find I tend to reserve that now for really difficult fabrics, like heavy fabrics where you would pull the thread and it breaks on you, then the dental floss method can be invaluable. But for just something like this, I find that two rows of gathering stitches are gonna hold those seam allowances more flat so you don't get that ruffled effect, which can be annoying when you're trying to sew something with a ton of gathers like this. So we're just gonna sew two rows of these gathering stitches. We're gonna start at the edge of your facing, okay? You don't wanna stitch these over your facing because we don't want any gathers on this facing where the buttons are gonna be. So start your gathering stitches right here to the right of the top stitching on your facing. And you're gonna do your first row of gathering stitches with a half inch seam allowance. You're gonna stitch all the way down till you get to right before the other front facing. You're gonna come back, do it all again, using a quarter inch seam allowance. So you have two rows of long stitches right next to each other, parallel to each other, at half an inch and a quarter inch. So as you might have guessed, you need a lot of bobbin thread to do this if you're doing four yards like I am. So make sure you have a fully wound bobbin in there because it really is a pain to run out of bobbin thread in the middle of this. And we're just gonna get stitching. So yeah, half an inch. Make sure you have nice long tails here. So half an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna just start stitching using half an inch as my seam allowance. And again, my stitch length is set to five millimeters. So stitch all the way down here till I get to just before the other front face. Okay, so I'm just coming to the end of my first row of gathering stitches at half an inch. So I'm stopping right before I get to the top stitching for my front facing. And leaving myself a little bit of a tail here. Now we're gonna go back to the beginning and do another row of stitching at a quarter inch. So there we go, so I'm gonna do the same thing Coming up to my facing here. So I'm gonna stop stitching, leave myself some tails, and we're gonna go over to the table and we're gonna talk about gathering this. But before we do, because I can show you a little bit better here, 
The next thing I want you to do is actually to find the center back point of your waistline. So take your two center fronts, your front facings, match them together, and then find the opposite end of the skirt where it would fold at center back. So right here, I'm gonna put a pin to remind myself that this is center back so that we know where we're gathering to from each side. Okay, so that's our center back point. Take this over the table and we will start gathering this. Before I start gathering, I want to tell you how I prepped the waistband. First, I fused my interfacing to the wrong side of the waistband. Then I folded the whole thing in half lengthwise. And then, so you can see my center crease there, and then I turned in one seam allowance, five eighths of an inch on the long edge, okay? And the last thing I did was I found the center point of the waistband, that'll be center back, and put a pin there just like we did on the skirt. So I know that this pin has to match that pin on the skirt. So as you can see, the skirt is gonna be a lot bigger than the waistband. We have a lot of gathering to do. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take it real slow. You're gonna find your two threads here on the wrong side of your fabric. So these are your bobbin threads, and you always wanna gather with the bobbin threads. And you're just going to pull the fabric along the threads like this. And what I do is because we know where our center mark was, we put a pin there, we're going to continue to gather all the way until we get to that pin and then start the same process from the other side of the skirt. Okay, so because I'm doing a lot of gathers, I have four yards that I'm gathering into this little waistband, my gathers are gonna be really packed in like this, okay? If you're doing a skirt without so many gathers, yours are gonna be more loosely distributed. So it's nice to have the waistband here to kind of get a sense of how tight those gathers need to be packed in there so you can kind of compare as you go. All right, so I have a lot of gathering to do. I am going to keep working on this and then we'll come back and talk about how to pin the waistband to the skirt. Okay, so I have done all of my gathering and you can see that my skirt is now roughly the same size as my, as my waistband, which is what you want. So I was really struck as I was doing this by how much more space the gathers take up in a heavier fabric like denim than like the lawn that I made the yellow version in gathers a lot easier. So I just want to say that it really depends on your fabric too. You might want to change how many yards you have in your skirt. If you're using a lighter fabric, you can use more yards. If you're using a heavier fabric, use fewer yards. Totally up to you. But it was a little work to get all these gathers packed in on this denim. Okay, so we've got our center mark pinned on the center back pinned on the skirt and on the waistband. So what we're gonna do now is put them right sides together. So I'm gonna turn this over. I'm gonna open out the waistband entirely like that and then put them right sides together. Start pinning there. So put one pin at your center mark. And then at each end, the waistband needs to extend 5 eighths of an inch past the finished edge of the front facing for the seam allowance. Okay, so then your gathers are going to get distributed in between there. So I'm just gonna... So as you can see, these gathers are packed in as tightly as they can go with four yards in this denim. So this is gonna be a very full skirt, which is what I want. All right, so put a few pins there. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Again, making sure that the waistband extends five eighths of an inch past the finished edge of the front facing. 
like that, and then just distributing it through there and then placing my pins there. So next thing we're gonna do is go to the sewing machine and sew these two together. I'm gonna sew it with the gather side up just so I can keep an eye on the gathers and make sure that they don't do stuff like that where you get it caught in the stitching and then you get a weird fold on the right side. So let's go on over to the machine. I'm just gonna play with this till I have it exactly how I want it and then we'll go over to the machine and we'll talk about sewing these two together. Okay, so we are ready to sew on the waistband and I just wanna make sure that you know the waistband needs to be completely opened out like this. You can leave the seam allowance still folded in, that's fine, but it just needs to be away from where we're sewing on the seam line here. Okay, so we're gonna sew at 5 eighths of an inch and make sure to put your stitch length back to two and a half to three, because the last thing we did was gather. So you're gonna start on the edge of the skirt and back stitch. And now we're gonna stitch all the way across these gathers. And just be really careful that your gathers stay nice and smooth and flat. And if you need to like occasionally pick up your presser foot while your needle's down and just kind of rearrange the gathers, that's totally fine. And this is why I really like the two rows of um, gathering stitches for this skirt is because I feel like it keeps the seam allowances really flat where it's gathered rather than all ruffled up. So it gives, just gives you a little more control. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch across the entire skirt waist and get to the other end. And the first thing that I would recommend that you do is check that you're happy with how the gathers look on the right side of the skirt. So I would just kind of like check it out, look at all your gathers, make sure you don't have any weird sort of areas like this where it accidentally got caught, the skirt got caught in the gathers. But um, yeah, I feel like since I was pretty vigilant um, like lifting up my presser foot and checking where the gathers were. I'm happy with how that looks, but if you're not, just go back and use a seam ripper to take out the little section that you're not happy with, redistribute the gathers in that little area, and then just restitch that little section. You don't, do not need to do the whole seam again, okay? So if you need to fix anything, do it now. Um, the next step from here is to trim down this seam allowance. So I'm gonna take my scissors, and what I'm gonna do, let's see if I can just kinda of show you. I'm gonna take both seam allowances, the waistband and the skirt itself, and I'm gonna angle my scissors towards me slightly so that it naturally creates a beveled edge to this seam, because there's a lot of bulk on those gathers, right? So if I kind of create a little angle like that, it'll help reduce some of the look of the bulk on the right side of the waistband once it's turned right side out. So I'm gonna trim like this, and I'm trimming the seam allowance down to about a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. My first, I still have those two rows of gathering stitches in there, and I'm gonna leave them in there to kind of control the fullness in that seam allowance, okay? So I'm going to trim across that entire waistband, I'm sorry, waistline seam, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is press it up, press that seam up towards the waistband, and then we'll talk about finishing off the waistband itself. Now that I've pressed my waistline seam 
up, next thing we're going to do is finish these short ends of the waistband. So what you need to do is keeping these two seam allowances turned in, you're going to turn the waistband so that it's right sides together like this. So it's folded in half lengthwise. And you want these bottom edges that are folded in of the seam allowance to match. And we're going to pin along this short end. Okay, so you can see right here, seam allowance turned in, and same thing on the wrong side. I'm just going to fix that pin a little bit. You can see the seam allowance is turned in there too. So, next thing I'm going to do is stitch here at 5 eighths of an inch so that my stitching is flush with this finished edge of the turned in facing here. Okay, so I'm going to stitch at 5 eighths of an inch. Stitch. And now I can trim these seam allowances down. You can kind of trim diagonally across those corners. Get rid of any threads and all of this. And what's going to happen is that we'll be able to turn this right side out, get a nice finished corner there, and then we'll be able to turn the waistband in, and that seam allowance is already turned in on the waistband so that we can completely enclose the waistline seam. Okay, but I need to do the same thing on the opposite side of the waistband. So again, I'm just going to turn the waistband so that it's right sides together folded in half lengthwise, making sure that those two seam allowances stay turned in. Pin along the short end and then stitch here at 5 eighths of an inch. trimming down, trimming diagonally into those corners. And then again, we're going to turn this right side out and just turn that corner out so it's nice and neat. And now we're ready to finish off this waistband. So what I'm going to do is turn the waistband to the inside so it's completely covering that seam. And I'm going to pin it in place, but pin it from the right side like that. Okay, so I'm making sure that this loose edge here is covering the waistline seam and then I'm pinning it in place from the right side because we're going to be stitching this from the right side so we can't have our pins on the wrong side. Okay, so I'm going to do that the entire length of the waistband and then we're going to stitch all the way around the waistband. We're going to do an edge stitch on the right side stitching all the way around to secure the loose edge, the seam allowance on the inside of the skirt, and also to just give it a nice finished look. So let me finish doing this part and then we'll do our edge stitching. So I just wanted to show you that I did stitch around all 
four sides of the waistband. So the bottom edge, which we started with, which keeps the seam allowance on the opposite side secure, but then also just to keep the whole thing nice and uniform looking, I also stitched around the short ends and the upper edge, which just helps the waistband stay nice and flat. So last thing I'm gonna do here is just give it a little bit of a press, and then we're gonna go mark our buttonholes, and then the final things to do are buttonholes and sewing on the buttons, and then we're done. Okay, we're ready to place our buttonholes. So grab your buttons, and what I did that I really liked on my skirt was I have one on the waistband and then to avoid having a gap right here between the next button, which you sometimes get on this type of skirt, I put the second button right below there and then evenly spaced out the buttons, the, the remaining. So one on the waistband and then seven on the skirt. So we're gonna use this fun gauge so the first one I'm going to center exactly on the waistband and you can use this little prong here that should be aligned with the edge of the skirt. And then you can use a chalk pen or your disappearing ink marker, whatever will show up for you on your fabric. That's where your buttonhole is going to be placed. So the next one I want to, I want to make sure it's like about a quarter inch below the waistline seam. So about right here should be good. Looks good. And then I'm just checking the spacing with this gauge. You can make them closer together or further apart, keeping in mind that I'm going to have seven buttons total. So one, two, three, I think there's eight prongs on this. So this will be my last button. You can leave a little bit of space at the bottom uh, it looks a little weird to have buttons go all the way down to the very bottom of a skirt. So just just about nine, eight and a half, nine inches. That's a nice, just a little bit more. Okay, so this is going to be my last button. All right, so we're aligning the prong with the edge of the skirt. Marking this with chalk. And if you don't have a sewing gauge like this, you'll just need to make sure that your markings are the same distance apart from each other. All right, great. So there are all my markings. And now I'm just gonna use my clear ruler here. I wanna make sure that I have, when I'm sewing buttonholes, I like to have a clear end line on both sides. So it looks like a, a capital I. And for an inch wide button, your buttonhole should be an inch and an eighth long, like that. So that you have a little bit of room to pass the button through. Okay, so I'm gonna make that uppercase I on all of my markings here. And then I'm gonna go over to my machine and sew my buttonholes. Um, buttonholes are different on every machine, so you're gonna to wanna to read your manual and go ahead and sew your buttonholes. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to place your buttons. All right, so I sewed my buttonholes. I have a six step buttonhole on my Bernina, so that's what I used. And I left, I opened all of these except for the last one because I wanted to show you how I did it. You always want to put a pin at the end of your buttonhole, like that. And then you can use your stitch ripper or a small pair of scissors to open it up. And the pin will keep you from accidentally cutting through the end of your buttonhole. So there you go. And if you have any little threads like that, you can just trim them away. And so there are all your buttonholes done. And then we're just gonna talk real quickly about how to place your buttons. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna overlap the right side of the skirt over the left by an inch and a half. Cause remember we had an inch and a half overlap that we built into this. So once you do that, you can put a pin through each buttonhole like this at the end or about a quarter inch from the end, the far end of the buttonhole where it naturally closes. And then you're gonna make a little chalk mark. Like 
can just make like a little X or something like that at each buttonhole point. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way down. And then I'm gonna show you a really cool trick for sewing on buttons by machine, this kind of button with um, holes in it rather than the shank type button, which just has the loop on the back. So what you can do is you're gonna use scotch tape to hold it in place, or if you have a button sew on foot on your machine, you can use that. But you're gonna put a piece of tape over the button like that, and then align the button with your mark like that so that the very center of your button is right over your button mark and you're we're gonna tape buttons all the way down at each mark and then we're gonna go over the machine and I'll just show you how to sew these buttons on by machine with a zigzag stitch okay so let's get these buttons sewn on you have them all scotch taped to your skirt now you're gonna have your regular presser foot on you are going to have your stitch length set to zero very important okay zero you and you're going to want to test it first if you're not sure if your machine does a zero stitch length because if your stitch moves forward at all you could potentially hit the button and break your needle so you don't want to do that so your stitch length is set to zero you're going to put the button underneath the presser foot and make sure you just pull the threads to the back and for now very important to keep your foot away from the pedal, okay? We need to get the zigzag stitch perfectly spaced so that you're not going to hit anything. And it's if you have your foot on the pedal, you could accidentally hit it. So your needle is right in the middle right now. Now you're going to adjust your stitch width, your zigzag width, so that it's going to go into the left hand hole of the button and then you're going to use your hand wheel to test this at every stage all right so i'm testing and it's going into the left hand hole and now i'm testing to see if it's going to go into the right hand hole and i'm going very slowly and it did not hit the button okay so that's good it went through the hole if it had hit the button that would mean that you need your stitch length to be wider so I'm just double checking myself that my width is correct and now that I'm happy with it I'm just going to hit the pedal. I'm going to hit the pedal very slowly and just build up a little thread there and that's it. I only have two holes in my button so I'm going to pull this out And I'm just going to take the scotch tape off, just peel it off the button here, like that. And then you're going to have some loose threads here. And because we have a zigzag stitch here, it's very secure. You can just trim all your threads closely or pull them to the back of the button. There you go. So beautiful machine sewed button. So obviously you could also sew your buttons on by hand if you're more comfortable doing that, but I did just want to show you a quick and easy way to sew your buttons on by machine. So that's it. I'm going to keep sewing my buttons and then the skirt is finished. So I hope you have loved learning how to sew this super easy, no pattern button front, front skirt. And I can't wait to see you wear your picnic set. And don't forget that if you want to sew the coordinating top, the picnic top, it's available on our Patreon, which is called Gertie's World on Patreon. So I hope you love it, and I will see you next time.